Hi, this is Casey from Aston Labs, and today we're gonna to be covering the best presets for your portraits. A big thank you to all the people who submitted their photos to be edited. If you'd like to see your photos edited in one of our upcoming videos, feel free to submit a RAW to the link in the description below. Now, before we get started actually editing, let's talk about our three-step workflow. This workflow is there to help you with the consistency in your editing. It's a great way to make sure that your edits are as easy and fast as possible while still maintaining the actual film look you're going for. The first step is to apply the preset. Second step is to adjust exposure for your subject. And the third step is to adjust temperature and tint to correct your white balance. Now let's go ahead and get started with our first photo. Okay, and this photo was submitted to us by Eli Epstein, thank you so much. And we'll go ahead it doesn't look like they are asking for a specific preset. So I think on a photo like this, it looks like they used strobe or some kind of flash. I think I can even see a little bit of the uh, softbox or something up here in the top corner. And I'm going to use something that's a little bit more neutral. Whenever there's a flash involved, I like to use a preset that's just not quite as uh, contrast heavy. So something like Portra Originals, uh, Portra 160, or maybe Fuji Originals, 400H would also be a good um, a good option. But for this, I'm going to pick, I think Portra 160 should be good. Okay, so there's the preset. You'll see it became uh, more flat. It's already pretty dark, um, but the, the colors are a little bit more muted. So we'll go ahead and our second step is to uh, adjust exposure. So I'm gonna pull up the exposure. Now I'm looking, let's see, right about there seems fine. Um, there are still some big shadows here. The shadows are there and so strong, um, also because he, they are using some kind of a soft box. Um, you can see actually it looks like right here an Octabox. You can, uh, it's a great way to look to see how somebody is lighting something is to see the catch lights in their eyes. Um, so yeah, it looks like they're using some kind of Octabox or something up there. And I'm going to, because these shadows here are still a little strong, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use Shadow Soft. And you can see right here, Shadow Soft just helps to recover uh, some of that detail. So we've gone ahead and I have step one, apply the style, step two, adjust exposure. Um, and I, I skipped ahead a little bit and uh, we, we checked out one of these profiles and step three is to uh, correct for white balance. Now I am seeing there's just a little bit of red in his cheeks that might be just part of this person. They might have just had a little flushed cheeks um, so I'm going to just warm it up a little bit to try to even, at least just even it out. Um, and we'll take our tint, whoops, it went up a little bit. I wanna go down. Um, and what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to remove, let's see, it's zoomed in a little bit too far. There we go. Um, and what, I, so if we, if we start here and there's a little bit of red, what I'm trying to do is just ease off of that and just sort of again just i'm trying to create a look that just feels a little less red a little less um, blotchy and just create an even skin tone but i'd say that that looks about right yeah um so now we do have more tools at our uh, disposal okay the last thing i'm going to do on this image is check to see if i want to add any grain um, grain is just it is there to mimic the 35 millimeter and medium format grain of actual film. Um, and here, I'll zoom in one more time. We'll go a little bit more. Here we go. And so here's without grain. It's And we'll go ahead and I'll click that. And you can see just that texture of the grain comes in and it looks really nice. And of course we have medium format grain and medium format grain is just finer. So here's 35 millimeter and then the medium format, which is still there, I'll roll over. There, you can see it's just a little less pronounced, a little bit more fine. Um, both look good. I think just in order, because this is a shot on shot with a strobe, I'm gonna use medium format grain. Um, sometimes when you're shooting with a strobe or a, a flash, the photo can feel much, much more sharp and adding just a little bit of grain can help to soften it. So here's our before and after. The last thing I might do would just be to, whoops, the last thing I would do would be to perhaps crop this to a 4-3 ratio. Um, you know, 4-3 I think just looks really nice, especially on uh, a portrait. And that will help to get rid of some of this um, 
some of this little softbox, and maybe we can crop out. It looks like this is a reflection of a window behind him. There we go. Perfect. So here we go one more time. So here's the before and after. Fantastic. And thank you so much, uh, Eli, for submitting this photo. Let's move on to our next image. This next image is by uh, Dominique. Thank you, Dominique. Um, and it looks like it was shot perhaps just like, I mean, it's hard light. So like the sun is overhead. They did a really great job, um, you know, positioning their, the model's face towards the light at least. So similarly to with flash, when there is hard light, I like to use a preset that has a little bit less contrast. So uh, we went with Portra original for the first one. I'm gonna go to Fuji original on this next one, and we're gonna pick Fuji 400H. And that's a film that has, again, less contrast. <clears throat> so we've applied our style. Now I'm going to check to see if I need uh, any exposure. And I think I could bring it up just a little, like really not much, just enough to sort of bring back some of the the luminance in the skin um, and now we can correct for white balance and I think I just want to well, it looks like your skin has a little bit more magenta and maybe just cool it off a little bit there that's that's starting to look pretty good and bring just a hair again uh, it's really important to be gentle with the tint slider um, it just it, a little goes a long way if you're having a really hard time with white balance. We do have some great videos on our YouTube channel to walk through some best practices when it goes to finding white balance. But one quick trick that you can try is just to take your sliders and just go too far in the wrong direction. And then as you pull them back, you'll start to find a balance that just looks natural and correct. And so we're getting there, we're getting there. I think almost there. Yeah, right about there. And as I'm looking down at this number, I think that that uh, yeah, I mean, that's just a little bit below where it had originally started. Let's see, it's a seven, yeah, and it started at 12. So we can do the same thing with the temperature and just see where it feels natural for this photo. There, that looks, that looks great. Um, <clears throat> so now that we've done, we've applied our preset, we've adjusted exposure, and we've dialed in the white balance, we can go to our extra tools. Um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click all soft, and this is just going to help to create sort of a, a more flat look. Our tone profiles are there to help with tricky lighting situations like this, like when it's, you know, direct light ahead, uh, above. And I'm clicking all soft to recover some of that detail in the shadows and the highlights. Now by doing this, it does make the image just a little darker. So we can go ahead and I can add back in some of that uh, exposure, just lightly bringing it back up. And I will go to lens correction and lens correction is there to help with vignetting uh, of, that your lens may have and distortion that, that uh, may come into it just from shooting like wide open or what have you. And it looks like lens correction uh, is automatically on perhaps or is just baked into this image. Yeah, not much, not much. Oh, I can see a little bit being fixed in this corner. There we go. Here, I'll just do a quick rollover you can see some of that vignetting being pulled back, but it's not too much. And I guess it doesn't make as much as of an impact as I had thought. Um, yeah, so there you go. I think that's looking pretty good. Here's our before and after and just yes, that's looking, it's looking much better. Thank you again, Dominique for submitting this image. Let's go ahead and we'll move to our next one. Ah, freckles. Okay, cool. So this gives us an opportunity to work through a photo in black and white. Um, this photo, I know I've just, I've edited this photo before and it does look really good in uh, like with a strong color. So we can do two, two edits real quick. I'll go ahead and I'll create a copy. So let's go to our artisan black and white pack. And this photo is going to have a lot of punch. So I'm going to go to pan F, you know, our, one of our more contrasty black and whites. And so I've applied the look, I'm going to adjust exposure bring it up a little bit. And because it's black and white, we don't really have to worry too much about the uh, the white balance. Uh, but one thing we can talk about is our filters. So these black and white filters are built just like the old screw on filters if you were shooting actual black and white film. And what they do is they will create uh, more luminance within those specific colors. So if I am 
I'm, if I have screwed on a red filter, then things that are red within an image will be brighter, green will be brighter, and if I was, you know, the yellow filter, then yellow things would be brighter. Um, and the opposite colors would be darker. So let's roll through so you can see it's uh, originally, in, in, at least in the original image, this is a little bit blue. So with the opposite of that red being blue, you'll see that the shirt gets a little darker. And green is making the green, is making this grass and these trees behind her brighter. Whoops, there we go. And yellow, which will bring up the luminance in her skin and probably some of this grass too. Yeah. But honestly, I actually like this without any of the filters on. Um, one thing I'm, I will check is just for our lens correction. And that looks like that does a lot for distortion and vignetting. Um, so I'm going to use that. Uh, it just helps to even out the exposure around the image. And that looks really nice. Um, I'm not going to apply any grain. You'll see that there's no grain tools available in the Artisan Black and White pack. And that is because they are inherent and built into every black and white film that we that we have. Uh, grain is such a great and integral part of black and white photography that we made sure to keep those baked in. Uh, we are still giving you the option, of course, of 35 millimeter grain or medium format. So you still can choose uh, whether to have that grain size to be a little bigger or smaller. <clears throat> and I, yeah, I don't think I need any tone profiles. If I were to do anything, I might make this just a little more punchy to kind of add in the contrast and really just dial it up. And here, I'll bring down that exposure just a little bit. But there you go. I think that looks awesome. It's before and after. And let's go ahead real quick. And I'm just going to do a very quick edit of this with color. I'm going to use our most colorful film. That is Ektar 100 from the Adventure Everyday Pack. And just bam, there's our color. So I've applied the preset. I'm going to adjust exposure. I'm going to correct for white balance. I'm going to say it needs a little magenta. And let's see a little more warmth. I, whenever I'm editing something with Ektar, I always opt towards be making it a little more warm uh, because I think Ektar just looks really nice when it's warmed up. And we'll turn on our lens correction. Boom. And that's all. I mean, so that's how quick editing is once you get the hang of it. It's just apply the preset, adjust exposure, correct for white balance, and you're basically there. We'll take a look. Here's the before and after and a little side by side. There we go. Here we, go. we have our black and white image and our color image. You tell me which one that you guys think is better. Um, I It's hard to choose. I think both are phenomenal. Uh, I think both are great choices. Um, I personally, I think I lean towards the black and white, but it's hard to ignore all of this amazing color. And this is such a great shot. Uh, again, oh, sorry. I, forgot to mention this is shot by Drew Lederman. This is a, a yeah, just an awesome photo, great personality and a really good job. Okay, so we have our next photo. This is pleasant. Thank you for submitting your photo. And let's go, I think for this image, while it could go two different ways, um, I, man, okay, I think I want to go something it looks like, you know, they have this brown surrounding, um, or sort of a looks like they're in a field. Uh, and I'm going to go a little bit darker, a little bit moodier, and we're going to go to Portrait Pushed. And Portrait Pushed is just, it adds that mood. It has these great sort of tonal shifts in the in the shadows especially. And Portrait 160 Push 2 Stops really brings in that sort of warmth to the shadows. And I think that just does an awesome job. So I've applied the, I've applied the preset. I'm going to adjust exposure. I think I can... You know what? I don't think this needs any exposure adjustment. Whoops, let's reset that. There we go. I think this is a, a great exposure out of camera and I'm going to soften it just a little bit, bring up some of that detail. We'll, we'll do it <clears throat> before and after real quick. So there's before and after. And yeah, it just helps to bring back some of the detail here and bring down those highlights and some of the shadows up in her hair. And we'll go with lens correction. Yeah, I could use just a little bit on there. And that looks great. Now, normally, like we did with the other photo, I would crop this. Whoops. I would crop this to that same 4-3 ratio. But when I do that, I feel like I'm losing part of her hand. And in a photo, when I see hands, I like to include them if possible. I don't like them being sort of like half in, half out. So if I was going to crop it to that 4-3 ratio, I would probably crop out the hands entirely.
Um, so otherwise, you just have some weird floating fingers, and that's where my that's where my eye would go. So that looks good if I were to crop it like that. But I actually think that I'll just keep it wide, uh, and that looks really nice. So thank you, uh, Pleasant, for submitting this photo. That was a really quick edit, and Portrait Push did a really good job. And actually, I'm seeing here that it looks like you're asking for Ektar. So let's I'll just make a virtual copy of this. I'll hit reset, and we'll walk through this. I'll do a quick edit of this in Ektar. Boom, look at all that warmth. And that looks really great too. I mean, Ektar is hard to hard to not enjoy. Uh, I'm gonna bring up the exposure on Ektar just a little bit. I'll do, I'm gonna do shadow soft. Yeah, and just bring back some of those, that shadow detail. And I'm gonna see, I'm gonna cool this off just a little bit. There, I think that looks good. So let's do another comparison. And you guys let me know in the comments which edit you like more. Here's our portrait push, a little darker and moodier. And here is the Ektar edit, which is a little bit more bright and colorful. But awesome, and thank you again, Pleasant, so much for submitting this photo. We'll move on to our last image, James. And James, you're asking for Fuji, oops. You're asking for Fuji 400H. I think it's a good choice for a photo like this. So that is in our Fuji original pack. I'll open that up and we will select Fuji 400H. So I've applied the preset. I'm gonna bring up the exposure and white balance doesn't look too far off. So we've adjusted, we've applied the preset, adjusted exposure, and I think I'll just warm it up just a hair. So yeah, not too much there. And that's pretty straightforward. Um, we could do all soft and see if lens correction looks like it's already baked in. And as I'm doing all soft, I'm seeing some of the, the shadow in his hair is starting to look a little flat. So let's go back. I'm going to click on the preset to sort of reset the recovery. And I'm just going to do highlight soft instead. There, that looks much better and it's sort of bringing things a little bit more in line. And yeah, awesome. And thank you, James. This is a great image. So let's get our before and after. And yeah, there we go. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on this quick edit of portraits. And again, if you'd like to see your own images being edited, feel free to submit a raw in the link below. If you do have any more questions or you'd like to reach out to us directly, you can always do that at m.me forward slash Labs or directly through email at support at masslabs.com. You can also join our Facebook group. We have a link below in the description as well. Or you can search on Facebook for Mass Labs community. And with that, have a great day and happy editing.